Hello, and welcome to episode 76 of the Just Life podcast. Sorry, sorry, sorry for the delay between episodes. There's been a lot of planning going along. Uh, with a bunch of new dudes joining the team. You'll be hearing a lot about all of that and from everybody over the coming episodes. I always enjoy a good story. And when my brother's around, he's always got a good story to tell. So we've got a long, juicy episode that we hope will make up for our tardiness. Today we talk about how crazy the world's become since the dawn of the internet, and how much we have access to in a simple click, and the ripples, hell, the waves of impact it has on each and every one of us, whether you're present to it or not. Be it the cancel culture society, or the ability to live stream pretty much anything and create a following around it, it's truly awe-inspiring and scary at the same time. We talk about Patrick's trip to Thailand and almost being eaten by an elephant, his trip to southern India performing stunts for 60 days, and his experience of semi-celebrity status riding camels and hanging with cows and being gifted with people's naked babies. Enjoy the show. We have to look a certain way now. Yeah, we totally. were even look, talking about like live streaming. Yeah, I want to do yeah, live streaming eventually, busy. but we need somebody to be able to manage it. And, and Keith could probably do that as well. There's a dialogue back and forth, right? That'll inevitably happen. But there's so much streaming tech. And the thing is, like, they'll still pay you to do anything. <laughs> like, we were talking about this yesterday, but like, they'll pay you to like watch you eat food or like play games or just work in the office or mm -hmm. do sexual acts. Just streaming. There's all these different streaming platforms. Really? Like, it's fucked up. There's an audience like, for anything. And it can watching be, people will watch people? They'll you, log in, they'll watch you do live. whatever yeah. the heck you're doing, living your life, and they give you little tips. And I mean, I don't I don't fully understand it. but It's I like webcams 2.0. It's like voyeurs. So people are not level. just jerking off on cameras. They're now. probably they're, always they're jerking also, off. But. Well, no, they're definitely doing that, but that <laughs> used to be just the thing. Now people will watch you brush your teeth. And jerk off. Andrew, <laughs> now that would be a test. That's like that whole jumping up and down, patting your head, and rubbing your belly, right? You're jerking off, you're brushing your teeth, you're fucking on the treadmill. They, they basically, <laughs> uh, it's, it's basically become like a weird what Truman show, about? you know? Like people just want to watch another person live their life. Yeah. And, and like ironically not live their life by sitting there watching someone live their life. Wow. Or like our, your kids, for example, or uh, our sister just sitting there watching people play Minecraft. They want to watch them play the game more than it's, they want to play the game. It's pretty crazy. It's crazy. Um, so my little girl is on Instagram. They both are actually on Instagram. I saw her last I saw her first accounts. post. It's like, yeah. I love this, but my brother destroyed it. It's a smushed up piece of Play-Doh. I'm like. <laughs> yeah, they got you. like three posts on there. Um, but she follows this YouTuber called Unspeakable. Unspeakable? Un sounds like a wholesome name. Yeah, I was going to say that sounds <laughs> un bad. Unbreakable or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, anyways. Uh, He's a pretty nice guy. Like he's he's got good content. It's not just intense, Super irresponsible, ir eerily clipped. Like there's no pause in anything they say. It's just nonstop. You know. Well, dialogue. I mean that's just the dynamic for video. It keeps people engaged. Like, like there's this one girl on LinkedIn, Shay Robottom. No, yeah, Shay Robottom, and uh, and she, all of her videos are like that, right? They're all they're, they're small clips, so she's always kind of like moving a little bit. But I works. watch her whole fucking videos. Yeah, it works. Though. <laughs> That's the only problem. And I'm she's like, really entertaining. Yeah. She's got a good dialogue. She she's gone viral a few times, and she's just been sharing how she's been doing it. It's uh, it's pretty impressive to be able to do those types of things would make a difference for the the type of content that people are drawn to, and the live streaming. I want you can uh, for uh, Podbean. They are putting a uh, beta live streaming audio. So it's not video, it's the audio that's live streamed. Uh, and and it's the same thing. So they're not going to see you, but they're going to listen to you and what's being said. Jeez. Yeah. And that sounds pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Yeah. That would be interesting. It would be it would confirm all of the paranoia you have when you sit down in the podcast room and you're like, "Oh yeah, right. You you keep remembering that no one's actually listening to me right now." We don't want to have this in the podcast. I can take it out. <laughs> People are when you're streaming listening. it, yeah. Yeah, they're streaming it and you're just like, you know. That's true. That's true. true. Everything you're saying, it's all the keywords are being logged by algorithms online, you know, trying to see if you're a terrorist or 
what the heck's going on Whoa. there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just shit, saying. Shit, 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 just real. <laughs> shit just got real. Kill the president? Did you guys, <laughs> what the fuck? Did you guys watch that uh, that new Dave Chappelle skit? I no, I haven't watched the, any the, of it Oh, yet. definitely. Yeah, his yeah. new... Uh, to yeah, kill no. everyone at school. You yeah. try to skip the school, man. Skip school. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. yeah. You ever tried? Nigga, you ever tried to skip school? <laughs> I'm so totally good. Totally missing it. I gotta oh, watch it. So funny. And uh, just so you know, completely different, but just as hilarious. Bill Burr's new special. Is I watched that one as well. It's so funny. And that guy goes from zero to ten, like in the best, most com- comedic way I've ever I seen. Know. He's so good, man. He's so good. Why is it so quiet in here? <laughs> yeah, because no one's. <laughs> he's like, you just see how you all just shut up when I said that. <laughs> Shit. It's funny because we're in a cancel culture society, so of course oh. it's like everyone's terrified to say the wrong thing. We're in a what society? Cancel culture. Oh. Yeah. Cancel culture. Basically, it's just the audience now has the ability to ruin a celebrity's life by prying into their past or whatever they're saying in the present and then making it politically incorrect. And even Dave Chappelle's like, I don't think I did anything wrong, but we'll see. You know, because <laughs> yeah, no, it no, just no. comes out, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like with Bill Cosby, right? I mean, don't get me wrong. That dude, he definitely did all that. Or, or Kelly, uh, you know, with like incriminating himself by constantly having sex with minors. These are obviously <laughs> examples of people that deserve to be, you know, punished. But uh, then there's uh, that uh, Kazim guy. I, or maybe I don't have his name right. It's, he's like that uh, Indian comedian that was in the uh, um, community. Aziz. And, Aziz, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he apparently got into so much crap just because of a bad date. Yeah, he had a bad date. Yeah, he tried, he like tried to... I don't even know what he happened. He didn't even do that, though. He, like he They, they made it. it seem like he was trying to like sexually assault her, but really it was just you know a bad date. that yeah, wasn't. They weren't on the same wavelength. And yeah, they went on just a date, and she complained was, about it, and everybody turned it into kind of like a mob. You yeah. know, get uh, your pitchforks. Yeah, we got to get them, you know, yeah. string them up type of deal. And, uh, that's right, yeah, because that's, that's one of the bits that Bill Burr has. Is he talks about how like there's no due process. Like as soon as he, <laughs> he, he talks specifically about women, he's like, as soon as a woman says something, it's like, we must believe here. We <laughs> yeah. must believe here. He's like, what, all of them? Like, <laughs> yeah. all of them? <laughs> no one makes things up. Like, Star Wars, someone made that yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you ever see that's Star so Wars? Someone, yeah, someone made, made that, that up. up. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, yeah man, you do have to have a due process. You gotta cross check and and not react. We were in a very reactive society as well. Yeah, it's more about like let's not look at the facts. Let's look at how we feel. Yes, and then let's act I on that. I feel justified now, and I'm feeling kind of good. I feel and so I, will I feel offended by your joke. It's like yeah, jokes are offensive. If you think of any joke that's ever existed, there's always someone that's at the butt of the joke. Always, that's what makes jokes kind of funny. So that means one person doesn't find it funny, but everyone else does. Yeah, like, like the chicken. Say what? Like the chicken cross the road? Yeah, chicken. Yeah, that was, like a, <laughs> that was such a dad joke. <laughs> I know, right? Like the chicken. It was so dad. It was so to dad. See what it, it was would funny. do. Yeah, like, <laughs> hey, the chicken. Stop, stop offending chickens. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're appropriating chickens. Man. <laughs> you're appropriating chicken culture. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're right on the cusp of like where I don't know about you guys, but I think a lot of that stuff is so weird. Like this idea of canceling and whatnot, because I was just always of the uh, belief that if I don't like something, I just don't participate. In yeah, it. you don't engage with that. Go, oh yeah, like okay, people think that way. I can't there's control a, how they think, and that's how it's gonna go. So I'll just hang out with these guys, right? Yeah, there, there's a. Uh, I feel the solution to that is complete. Um, I, I want to make sure I set this up. That I am. Anybody is willing to say what needs to be said in a transparent, like if we're always putting the truth down mm. and we're mindful of that, that's just what, how it needs to go. These types of things fizzle out. Oh, totally. And, There's and power there on that other it, side. It will. If it is true, if it's still another bullshit story. Well, if it's just because it's the way that you want it to go yeah. rather than, you know. If you start trying to manipulate the direction. Yeah. But that's what happens. Ultimately, yes. always, they're going to manipulate it. Because, like, in that Bill Burt, you know, Paper Tiger sketch, he's like, yeah, I think we got them all. You know, like, it was good. Me Too was good. But I think we got them all. <laughs> and now it's just like you see the new stories, and it's just like bad dates, bad date experiences. Less yeah, of, like, yeah, yeah. Harvey Weinstein, like, basically raping celebrities in order yeah, to, like, like, get them more. Yeah, the plants and shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, I don't even know half the shit you guys are talking about. Dude, you got to get into this. This is, like, the world around This you. sounds like... Um, celebrity like well, tmz they, shit it is but they it, it well, has well, an impact right because like the me too movement was a big deal for women because it was identifying a lot of like crazy predatory habits that a lot yeah, of men were true. having 
Yeah. Like there was even stories of guys running down the hallway. I think Bill Burr was commenting on it. Yeah. He said it was just like there was like a woman that was like trapped in an office, and this guy was like running after her while like masturbating. Like, well, no, naked. he's talking about Harvey Weinstein. That was him doing Harvey that. Harvey Weinstein corner. He, I think he did one of the things he did. I think was like he blocked a doorway or some <laughs> shit, and he like jerked off into a plant. So bad. I mean, in front of somebody, in front of a, like, like forcing he, them to watch. He, he allegedly he raped like thirty celebrities in it. Like he's Jesus like this guy's Christ. a monster because he's like the he apparently he apparently was the guy who could be like yeah this guy he's done like yeah he no he get no role, roles burn. in Hollywood type thing. So like you're the all power tra- yeah him. you're trying to get on a movie and, and he's like oh yeah no we'll definitely make you the number two <laughs> if you do a number. She's two. like sorry. He's like no. She's like. Like that, yeah, <laughs> and then like or no, and so now that's what these women all came out and were like, yeah, this motherfucker. Wow, and they didn't and have so much of a chance to speak out because like everybody the, knew, but no one did anything. Yeah, that's yeah. the crazy thing. So it, like, it just yeah. like the dam broke basically. Yeah, yeah. it all it's came out. But decades. so then what? There, what happened? There, there so that guys. guy's like basically out of the industry. Like, Dude, so it was it was a mob and, rule at that point. You know, they came out with their pitchforks and tiki torches, and I've heard women uh, on on podcasts and stuff like that after this all happened they're like oh yeah no i remember being at st- at, at parties and stuff and they were like make sure you don't go like don't go anywhere with harvey like on your own don't don't do that <laughs> like that was like people yeah. knew about like even uh kevin spacey like apparently kevin spacey people knew about basically him. always even like, cosby people knew like that he was like yeah he was quaaludes to women right like, fucking crazy man but yeah. but now but that's Weinstein, that's now like, where the truth revealed itself like that those things happened and to, to your point about uh, the, the reaction of um, this type of movement now where somebody could say something about someone, if it's bullshit, mm-hmm. it won't go anywhere. Because... Eventually. The, well, and here's here's the thing that I, I believe it, why it won't go there. Because, what's his name? The guy that you're talking about? What is it, Bill Burr? No, no, the no, guy Harvey who... Weinstein. No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> the, We're way off. The, the guy who... who just fell into it. It didn't actually oh, Aziz. happen. Aziz. 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 Yeah. Um, but that's the thing. It turned into kind of a witch hunt for that. Yeah, no, he was in trouble. Got a lot for a of exposure. It was, Same it, thing with um, Stephen Hart. Um, Kevin, or Kevin Hart. Hart. And the problem with it is a lot of times then the damage is done. Yeah. Now their career has been affected. Right? It's kind of like getting accused. There's been. There's but been, how, how. So describe Aziz for me. What well, do you know about him? Uh, other than the fact that he's a comedian, not much. But uh, I give a better a better example might be Kevin Hart because you know of him. I do know, and Kevin he's Hart. one of the most famous comedians like yeah. at, of all time right now. Uh, and he apparently was invited to host the Oscars, uh, but then I guess well, like, he had the job. He had the job, he was but hosting the Oscars. But a long time ago, he made some tweets that were like homophobic, and, and they weren't nine, really. They, 2010, something like that. Yeah, and they were more like a joke, but they it was just a distasteful joke. He, that, he said, he "Okay, said, this is perfect, though." Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what yeah. I mean. Because it's the thing that burned him later. It yeah. if, them big time later. But if we are, uh, if we are truthful, and and we we've got the, the the our values are in the right spot, and we're mindful of the things that we said, like you said earlier, and don't say stupid shit like that. But then, you're a comedian, but he's a comedian. Man. You're a comedian. You're supposed he said, to say he said stuff if like his, that. If he found out one of his sons were gay, he would disown them. No, he said he would smack the dollhouse over their head. Oh yeah, 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 which yeah, is yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, no which is ridiculous. Do that. Yeah, the dollhouse, okay. Get it, like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so tell me, what are some of the raciest things that Bill Burr has said? Oh my oh, God! Dude. How do you Give even me, go there? He has a whole bit on his last, not his last, but one of his one of his. Uh, What's the difference between Kevin Hart and Bill Burr then? No, no, in people, that, but that's in the that thing. dynamic. People roast him too. Yeah, right? they're like always, if, they're always like if he, Bill, put it this way: Bill Burr would never, will never host the Oscars. It's <laughs> <laughs> never going to happen. But, but he's it, being truthful to himself. Absolutely, he's Even not he trying is. to show up a certain way inside of an environment that's actually not. He is. It's but, not a fit. But here. you're talking about you're talking. Well, yeah, that's true. But you're that's true. Yeah, but they're the ones who wanted to hire Kevin Hart. I mean, he's been a he used to be on. Right, but then Kevin Hart gets to say, you know what? You guys aren't actually for me because I know the types of things that tend to happen here. He stood in that. Yeah. Well, no, he was going to go do the job because it's always been a dream of his. But when they told him, yeah, you have to apologize, he's like, no, I'm not going to do it. But he still did it. He did it for six weeks after. He He did every talk show and and news show. And and apologized. And apologized because it was affecting his career. And uh, and where's he at now? Oh, he's still one of the most famous comedians. The point is, it's like, you can't really, comedians are going to say shit that's not true. I get the the extreme of of comics. But then uh, Kevin Hart was truthful, likely. About his apology, like yeah. 
I, I think it was more like sorry for making a joke. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like well, kind of ridiculous. If it is, well, but here's the thing: when you get called out, you get to be humble and accept the the reaction that that happened, like that it created. Yeah, it, 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 it was, created. You get to own it. It was a disproportionate reaction because. But it, that's it, the thing now with society is we got a disproportionate yeah. reaction. But here's the, this is the thing that I'm pointing towards: if you are bold and truthful and willing to say the thing that you know makes a difference or not, it will change the tide of it. And that's kind of why Dave Chappelle and Bill Burr are getting like so much heat and exposure, but they're like sort of standing on a platform like saying, I'm going to say everything that you people don't want me to say because I see no reason why I shouldn't because it's kind of funny. And if you watch the stand-ups, there are offensive things that they say, but what they've done is they've made it funny. So there's a way in which they did it where mm -hmm. you can appreciate the, yeah. the irony and the ridiculousness, mm -hmm. but we are not segregating and isolating. And They're, yeah, making, fun, the person. they're yeah. making fun of the people who, who punish you extremely for doing something minor, and they're actually making fun of the people who actually think this way. Right. Like if you're a racist or whatever, they're making fun of the racist You're being person. completely, not exactly. The not on their side. Okay, yeah. that's great. Because but you're also the, kind of making fun of the other celebrities that just kind of went spineless and just, oh, sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're not totally. allowed to joke about that. Like, they're making totally. fun of everybody. So they're putting them on, on the table. Yeah. Bill Burr's been saying the either, reality either, of what's going on. Either all comedy's okay or none of it is. Yeah. You can't, like, you can't say that. You can't joke. Well, and it's, it's freedom of speech and this whole thing. And it's awesome, though, but it really points to it. When you're trying to hide shit and, and deny things and you don't step up, you don't own it, Man, it'll eat you alive and yeah. and leave you to die. Yeah. Ruin some people's careers as a result. Yeah, and it's so it should. I because you're them, a dumbass. I called them the alphabet people. Like, I don't want to invoke their rage of the alphabet people. Yeah, Dave who probably <laughs> has, a whole, Dave yeah, he has a whole bit about we the alphabet people. We know that LGBTQ, right? And he had this whole bit about them being like in a car. It's like, you, got, you guys can understand. This isn't like one whole movement. It's like a bunch of separate movements, but they're all in the same car together. <laughs> and none of them really get along. It's oh, it's just brilliant. It's brilliant, and to see like that'd be an interesting video skit. It was, yeah, and and especially with his mannerisms, and you know how Dave Chappelle. But to is. actually have the scene of all of them in a car. I wish he still did Dave Chappelle show. That, that would be Chappelle show, yeah, yeah, hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, like, y'all know who's driving the bus, right? It's the whites. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, they've been on these no, roads before. No, no, he in goes, fact, we made these roads. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. He goes, he goes, you know who's driving the bus, right? It's the G's, <laughs> particularly the whites. The, light <laughs> the white yeah. G's. <laughs> oh man. Just watch the skit. Oh, I yeah, will. I will. It. Totally. He's way better the, than we The are. Michael Jackson one was particularly funny. Even though it hit some buttons, obviously, for a lot of people. It's like, it's Michael Jackson. And even if he did do it, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, he delivers it better. Oh, because, yeah. Well, that's his, that's his thing. Oh, that's what he does. But the favorite thing I enjoyed so about funny. it was the reaction of, like, obviously, like, the extreme left liberals. And, you know... It's just a few people trying to convince everybody that we all think this way. And if you go on something like Rotten Tomatoes and you'd see the reviews on the Dave Chappelle uh, Sticks and Stones comedy, it was like, first it was 0%. Yeah, it was zero. And then it went to like 22, 24%, but that's still like super low. And then you look at the audience score, which is basically the majority of anyone watching it, and it was at an unprecedented 99%. So you see this huge disparity in opinion. And it's just like, is this just a group of people that are trying to tell the rest of us what's okay? And that, yes, you know, we shouldn't find definitely. that funny. It's insane. So you're kind of seeing it revealed for what it really but is. But this is the opportunity. You get to yeah, say. No, 100%, 100%. You get to say. And so in disrupting the cultural stigmas and, and expectations and the way it's always been, and no, you never had a choice in it, now people get to say, no, no, this is, this is why. And this is what I'm going to do, and this is why I'm going to do it. It's not just another reaction to it. It's justified. And... Have a think about that, or yeah. not. That's not my deal. That's your thing. I mean, you know what happens to people when you tell them they can't do something. Most people don't like that. <laughs> they, they, they will do literally the thing that you just told them not to do. If only that were the case. Most of the time, people don't do fuck all. Well, come on, man. Like, think about They don't. What about pirating? Well, Internet no, you're, pirating. Yeah, but I don't that know what it's... That was such an illegal thing in like the, like the late 90s well, and so early 2000s. So like, here, here's the thing. I don't even know what the fuck that means. Like, in, like downloading videos, bit, bit oh, porn. pirating, okay, pirating yeah. digital Arr, got it. <laughs> Arr, matey. Arr, me matey. I yeah. steal your videos. Oh, okay, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Like Napster came out, and everybody was downloading all the Metallica yeah, songs, but, and they were losing it. All those lawsuits yeah, came yeah. out. That didn't stop anybody. It disrupted the whole industry. Actually, it changed, it changed yeah. the way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that didn't stop people from doing it. To this day, there's still people doing it. 
they turned Pirate Bay into essentially a honeypot, which is a fancy way of saying it's controlled by the government and they're logging anybody that goes on it to download, like, media. Uh, and they tried putting together class action lawsuits to try to sue, like, groups of thousands of people. And to this day, it has not slowed down even a little bit. Because when you tell people that, you know, you're not allowed to do certain things, that they can still do Well, especially people. the people that, that started that movement. They're very spiteful people. <laughs> oh, yeah. They don't like uh, that. Fuck you. I'll oh, yeah, do you, it anyway. It hasn't looked like you really then, stopped me, though. But then that's to that point. So, um, yeah, I get it. It was a popular thing. And then all of these platforms that just made it, the media that you want so easily accessible. We'll talk about music, Spotify. Oh, yeah. It's they just, have to change, man. Yeah. It, they force them to change. Like, if we want to keep relevant in this this moving target of a of an in, of a marketplace then we need to adapt to it and uh spotify is the only place that i go to now and any song that i need is right there what what are you smirking no about? it's just insane i think about spotify now and i'm just like holy shit like they even like have an algorithm where they're guessing songs i would like and then they're right but most of the time Dude, so I'm listening i had like, a song come up it was like a german techno song I don't know where the fuck it came <laughs> from. And, and it was on my, my was playing it, right? And it might have been connected to when mom and dad were here and there was some German songs that they wanted us to some hear. folk music? No, <laughs> it was, it was weird. I, I can't even remember what it was. And then, and then this song that I hadn't heard in like 20 years, it's not a very good song. But, but hey, it was nostalgic. nostalgic. It's nostalgic. It was, yeah, that was surprising. Dude, you me. send me that song because it might be one of the old nostalgic songs I'm looking for. That's the thing with Spotify is you can play like music from your childhood. And All right. Like, wow, cool. this is so I easy. Go check out Spotify again, man. And, and, yeah. I also, I and also, anything is there. Yeah. Yeah. Hell, our podcast is there. I, I also, wink. huh? Plug. Shout out to Spotify. Uh -huh. I, I also just like, man, like the, the world we live in today, like this constant nonstop feeding of pleasure, like. I can honest. I get tired of my music now, and it's like I need something new and fresh and exciting, and I don't have to look for it anymore. Before it was like this whole journey. Mm. You had to go to like That's the music true. I remember store. That. You know, you're looking, you're demoing CDs or, or vinyl records, depending on your age, or cassette tapes, or cassette tapes, and uh, that was part of the process. That was kind of exciting, and then you'd end up buying one, and that would be the music you'd listen to for like the next three or four months. But now Spotify, it's like the minute you need like something new and fresh. It's like a click away. Or you, you hear you hear an ad or you, you see that whatever on YouTube or something like yeah. that. And then you can immediately go get, oh, that song's awesome. You can go get it right you away. See, with right music, away. the one thing that's missing for me with music with Spotify, and I do use Spotify, Instrumentals. is I yeah, liked I, I like <laughs> buying, like you pointed out one time, David pointed out to me, having something tangible. Mm. Yeah, I liked It does miss that. that. And what I always, as a music guy, what I always liked doing was flipping over while I'm listening and seeing who produced, who engineered, who... Who, like all the people in the background that put this together. You and would do you, that. Of course. And then you would Mr. see. Mr. Engineer guy. All of a sudden there's music that you listen to. And you're like, oh, I like this. And I like this. And I like this. And then you start bridging the gap that, oh, it's because it's the same group of people huh. that are yeah. putting it together in the background. But now on Spotify, it's just you have a song. You, you also have, have the internet, internet, which is basically. Oh, you can say, you the, got the Google can, but most But it's not in gonna, one package. Yeah. yeah it's not tight, right tightly presented. It's not the experience that it, it, it's it, not the experience, yeah. Progress comes at a cost. It's got to let go of something well, in order to, to fill it with something else. Thing yeah, with, attention span. The interesting <laughs> thing with Spotify is that the artists don't get paid. They do. They get paid by how many people are listening but to it. But it's very minimal. But it's, min it's minuscule, and yeah. So, so Spotify is more like an advertising platform. It's uh, unintended consequences is the thing. But hold on a second here. Let's talk about that real quick. Because I, I never thought about this until the other day with, uh, you know, you know, I follow fighters and stuff like that on Instagram. And this one fighter, this girl, Paige Van Sant, she came out and said, I get paid more for my Instagram following than I do in my UFC fights. What? Right? No, but check this out. Okay. Think about that. So think about that. The thing that I, I don't really have heard, heard, haven't really heard people talk about this. So a lot of these celebrities who aren't getting the same record sales they used to get, so they have to go on tour and whatnot, go check out the, the number one pop star's Instagram following. She's, they're making money in other places. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, right? That they never used to make money in. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? He's on YouTube. He's on and YouTube and Instagram just making his own videos. Yeah, like, right? So it's, it's, it's so really weird to see because, like, you always look at those platforms and it's like for the common person, you know? The common man makes some sort of home video and puts it online for people's, like, you know, entertainment. But now you got celebrities do. But that's like, just it. It almost went the other way around. Like, these people who are already celebrities saw over here, like, Dave and Vern have, like, 6 million followers. They're like, wait a minute. I already have 30 million fans. How quick can I get a following? Let me yeah. make a video. Yeah. 
Hey, everybody, I'm on the movie. So, and then I'm like, bam, 150 million followers. I'm like, bam, I'm not even making movies anymore. I'm just going to do this. <laughs> YouTube, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, that's, it's crazy. It's a crazy huh? world, man. That's the power of it, right? If if treated for good, and, and it's subjective, obviously, but, man, you can make a difference. Do you know what my wife told me the other day? She's like, Ashton Kutcher, like, actually, legit, this sounds crazy. He probably has, like, a specific phone he uses, or maybe he only responds to certain ones. He actually put his phone number on his Instagram. He's like, yeah, you know, it's how I prefer to chat with my fans. So hit me up, shoot me a text. Really? Yeah, yeah dude. Must be going off all yes, the and then time. somebody was commenting <laughs> and being like, yeah, no, like, I don't know if it's like, you can't hey, tell if it's actually, actually him, but he says that. It could be a bot too, right? Just a voice algorithm that's just a robot sounding like Yeah, who the hell knows? He has shares in Google or whatever, right? Oh so he's my God. That shit <laughs> so Let's see talking, if it works. He's a really nice we guy. We totally just blew that right out of the water. Yeah. That's no, I'm not taking anything away from him. Maybe, that, maybe he does. Who knows? Maybe maybe he spends a certain period of his time just responding to certain ones he finds compelling. That's, you like, know, if that's knows? actually the case, if it's real, that's pretty impressive. No, I How think would that would be, be awesome. Though? It's impossible. If you got millions of people calling you, how, how do you, you, how do you know it would be impossible? And he's not saying he's talking to all of them. Yeah, he's no. just saying he's talking to them. Mm. He's not saying he's talking to all of them. It's funny how he went there, right? He's talking to all of his fans on his phone. Uh-uh. That's just how like, I see phone conversations. It's like, you know, if someone wants your attention, you only have your ability to give your attention to one person at a time. Yeah. Unless it's some massive group chat where he's just like talking to a thousand Yeah, I mean, I don't know how, how, how he would do it, how you would manage it. Oh, the, who, who's his wife again? Is it? Uh, um, I Nina. What? I don't know how to say her name. She's from that set of the show. Yeah, it's kind Nina of funny. It was like it was uh, I can't the two characters they played in that were dating, kind of ended up. Being yeah, like, yeah. It's like Amelia Dunst or something. But uh, there was this funny YouTube video that they put up because you know those trash articles like Inquirer yeah. or T, uh, not TMZ, but the people that make those phony news articles about celebrities, or saying, even those magazines and shit that come out. Oh, yeah, and Safeway, and, and they had those for forever. Uh, there was one saying that their relationship was in trouble, yeah, and then this whole, this whole crap article made about it. And he's driving in the car with her, and he's just like, "Well, is our marriage in trouble, honey?" And they're just like going through every bullet point and sort of debunking it in real time. Yeah. Which, like, there's obviously people that read that trash and think it's real. It's like, oh, oh this oh, is my exactly. source of information. I can't believe celebrity. Queen Elizabeth did that. Oh my god, <laughs> what a slut! <laughs> what a slut! <laughs> But then you got these actual, you got the actual <laughs> actors like on a public forum addressing all these people and just basically showing that it's all lies. Yeah. Which then has to impact that company's oh, business, I would, right? I would think. That's your phone. Oh no, it's your phone, Mr. Patrick. Just, uh, Mr. just Patrick. press the little stop button. Who is it? Jade. No, nope. don't answer. I don't know how to do this. Oh, there you go. <laughs> just press. <laughs> Is this gonna be an edit for the podcast or what? <laughs> Can we? Oh, uh, answer. oh my god! Ah, she'll never listen to this shit. Can you? Um... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I meant that in a very respectful way. Dude, you're 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 making a very compelling argument. <laughs> oh god! Let's just do that. Oh, oh my god! She's, she's a treasure. She sounds like it. Sounds like a real sweetie. That wasn't uh, who we were gonna meet yesterday, was it? What was her no, name? No, that was Julia. Julia. Yeah, Julia's name is. Julia, Julia. Yeah, she was she was talking about this like uh, she does like this trauma therapy for first responders. So like wow. people like police officers, EMS, uh, and you know there's a lot of psychological damage that they go through. I mean you, you can't tell me that if you go to a a site and there's like a school bus of like decapitated children that wouldn't affect you profoundly on some like uh, primal level. And then carrying that with you, you know, pretending oh, that everything's man. okay. Can't it's imagine. A dark turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. Well, it's, it's about what what her um, his friend is doing, but supporting that's what she them. does, yeah. supporting those people, but through well, things like energy work or stuff like that hasn't really been empirically proven, but there's still some weighted evidence behind it, oh, enough yeah. and convincing enough, in fact, that she's even able to get certain city councils and agencies like that on board with it. Oh wow, well, that's amazing. I think people are starting. Like, this is a whole other rabbit hole here. So I just wanted to come back though, because you were before the phone rang, you were actually making a point. Do you remember? <laughs> Was I? <laughs> Made a point. Did I say something? I made a point? Anyways. I can't remember, man. All right, fair enough. It's but, like uh, last week. <laughs> <laughs> which, which Where is, am I? <laughs> how did I get here? Oh, look. I'm alive. Yeah. yeah, it was it was a bit intense there for a little while. I sort of got I was on a roller coaster ride. Like you kind of had those like when I first looked over at you, you had like your eyes looked like a bear, like you're just kind of like soulless looking through everything. Oh, that's lovely. Jesus! Wow. Maybe I'm taking a you dark. You must have had some traumatizing wilderness experiences in your life. <laughs> oh man, 
I was it's that cell that's bare. I was listening to, to uh, I was listening to fucking Joe Rogan. He was talking to Bill Burr about, about bears, right? And how I like, think I listened to that one too. Yeah. Yeah, he was talking. I never I never actually tied this together. He was talking about the difference between uh, an omnivore is that the word mm-hmm. and, a, and, a, and a vegetation animals. No, no, no. Wait, I'm getting I'm mixing it up. Like a predator versus. Uh, like a gorilla, for example, would eat mostly vegetation, but if given the opportunity, eat meat. No, no, no. I made the wrong reference. What I'm saying is, oh, okay. is the difference between like a bear and a tiger. Okay. You want to get eaten by a tiger, as crazy as that sounds. Because they'll kill you as fast as yes, possible. Yes, they're, because they're a predator. They're a hunter. A bear, I bear will scatter in your ass and yeah, eat you alive. Yeah, exactly. He goes, literally, a bear will put oh a paw God. on you and just start ripping chunks out of you. Like, they don't care about killing you, right? That's why so bears terrify the, Yeah, yeah. So the, the, I was just thinking about that that image, and I'm just like, oh, my God. Either one of them sounds horrific, right? But at least what you're, they were talking about getting eaten by a lion, and they're like, you're just, you just go like this. This is what you do. <laughs> Here it is. Show like, don't, don't fight it. He's just going to rip your skin apart and then rip your throat apart anyway. So, But with a bear, ugh. Yeah, they, they almost aren't even aware that you're alive. I yeah. mean, sometimes they'll, they'll only be attacking you because they're afraid that you're the They are going to kill you, yeah, yeah. for sure. Is for that sure. the soulless reference, then? I was it's, just making a... Yeah, but it's he interesting. just made it scarier than it needed to be. Yeah, man, I'm yeah. petrified of fucking bears now. Bears, no, bears are... Oh, my God. Yeah, they are... You know how big and strong that they are? Dude. Like, it's absurd. It's, it's absurd how much strength that they have. They, we've, I've seen videos where they just like swipe at a tree and just like the tree goes sailing, just like splinters in thousands of pieces and goes sailing. And it ain't some skinny little tree; it's like a big ass tree. Really? The amount of strength that they have, they could take your head off with just one swipe. Well, if you're talking about like a yeah, like a, a grizzly, a bear. grizzly bear or hmm. a big, big even bear black bears, bear. even though they're smaller, they're yeah. like well, there's, there's still, more black bear attacks than there are grizzly. Attacks. They're still three to five hundred pounds though. Those that's crazy. Bears. Imagine like, fighting someone that's three hundred yeah. pounds. Yeah, a, gri- a grizzly, like a big one, they can be up to like twelve hundred. Like big, you know, oh, a mature man. male. Can't even imagine. Yeah, and they got skin and a That's hide insane. so thick that you could have like a Bowie knife, and it would probably just like bend. <laughs> oh yeah, what was I saw a meme about that? It was like, uh, oh, what did it say? It was like, it was like, oh, what do you do when you have a knife and a bear attacks you? And then it said, see if you can set the record for the number, the amount of stab wounds in a bear before you die. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there was a really funny story I read. That there was a guy that was attacked by a bear, and he did manage to kill it with a knife. Really? Yeah, he just managed to hit the right spot on the neck. If you know where to hit. And he managed to kill a sure. grizzly bear. It wasn't just a little bear, and it wasn't like a sick bear. It was just, he killed would, a bear. And he had like a katana like a, or something? Like, you would hope there head was, head was a bus of well, like, Well, right? I think a katana would probably just get wedged in his neck, and he'd just get <laughs> super <laughs> pissed off. It's not like know, the man. cartoons, Dave, man. They're it not should be. steel. And shit like that. If you guys ever read like the BAMF safety brochures about what to do if a bear starts to attack no. you, it's what? the most depressing thing ever. And it's partly, partly, partially why I'm like kind of scared of bears. But they got these little images too that are like oh, the worst. They're like, yeah, if you see a bear, you know, stand up and just make yourself look bigger and intimidating, and never run because it would trigger its instinct. And if the bear is attacking you and on you, or no, then it says, and if the bear is approaching you, go into the fetal position, and and it might just be afraid of you, thinking you're a threat. And then if, if you're start, in the field position? Yeah. And then if it starts eating you, fight back. <laughs> fight back with all your might. Show that you're not easy prey. It's like, but he's already eating me, and I'm on the ground. There's like any chance I might have had for winning, as slim as it was, is now gone completely. And then they got these little pictures that show the whole thing happening. So they got this one of this dude on his back, and he's like, <laughs> he basically just How looks do like you he's create dying, a picture you know? that's appropriate enough and and relays the message Jesus, it only relayed a message of hopelessness <laughs> in my opinion so uh, that's why i'm just never gonna root for bears yeah yeah totally because like i've here's the thing i've wrestled with some dudes who have made me feel like a boy and a bear would sh- rip that person in half yeah so it's like oh, they're painful jesus christ man yeah. like, i was listening to rogan again and he was saying about how like even like like people have no you have no context for uh, he goes. I, I he goes. I love uh, the elephants. Were cool. He was talking about his whole trip to Thailand or whatever. He was like, but he's like, I wouldn't ride it. Like, <clears throat> he's talking about how the elephant wrapped its trunk around a tree and pulled it out by the root. Yeah, that's crazy. And started eating it. <laughs> it's just like what? Like, I, I was in Thailand at wow. the elephant nature park there, and uh, they had mostly just like these animals that used to be abused because like in thailand they had rich these... people and whatnot well no they're called mo- they're called mohawks <laughs> they're, they're definitely rich, not rich, rich people, people. Yeah, you're like rich, 
rich people. No, no. Well, it's, for pets and shit, right? Well, yeah. they're like, mohawks, actually, and what they do is they, like, take them when they're babies and then beat them within an inch of their life and then bring them back to health, like, nurse them back to health. And what this does is this creates this psychological, you know, type of relationship between the trainer and the elephant uh-huh. where the elephant True now is, is confused into thinking, oh, this, this, this being is my master and taking care of me, even though he was responsible for, you know, stealing you from your parents and then beating you within an inch of your life. Uh, and then they do all these really abusive Jesus things, Christ. like chain them or have these things around their neck that are to think that they can't wire. move. And yeah, and then they'll do things like if they're disobedient, they'll like they'll gouge their eyes out. Like it's insane the type of abuse that these like super smart and huge animals will endure. God so this damn. nature park was basically a reservation for all these rescue elephants to just kind of live and do their thing. Um, and there was one that was there. It was an older one. It was a matriarch, but she was kind of blind in both of her eyes, and like I guess she had like these knee problems in her back leg. Anyway, the point of the story is we're feeding these elephants, and they eat, like, whole watermelons. You just can't have, like, a watermelon. <laughs> and they take it, and they're like, ah, they just bite into it, and it splinters everywhere. Wow. But uh, I wasn't really paying attention to the instructions because I was, like, just so... <laughs> That's so stoned. unlike you. I, I know, I you know, I'm usually really honest. But, but that day I was not. And uh, what happened was, as I'm holding this fruit in my hand, the elephant wraps its trunk around my hand and Ooh. starts pulling me into its mouth. And I, you know that feeling you try to pull your hand out of something? The it panic was, sets it in. was not moving at all. Like it was just literally like if my hand had been like put into a wall of concrete and I tried pulling it out after it's oh. cured and everything. <laughs> but the insane thing was like after a few seconds of this terrifying experience, uh, the elephant I don't know, it like I don't know if it saw me, but I did see its eyes. And if you've ever seen an elephant's eyes, they're weird. Because you know how we have whites in our eyes? Theirs are, are all black. They're all black, so it's kind of creepy, but I saw its like eyes open and it was like whoop and then just let me go. Cool. It, it was aware that it was like it had my hand and not just the fruit, and I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> you know, because that was that Man, was kind of scary. That's insane. Yeah. Wow. And, and then they walk towards you, right? Because they you just walk out there in the open field with them, and they uh, walk towards you, and and it's terrifying because they'll walk <laughs> around you, and they'll be like, and they start getting they start getting in there, and you know, you, you could get wedged by these things, and they just smush you. Oh yeah, like, no, that's amazing. Yeah, what an experience! Insane. Holy shit! It was pretty cool though. So yeah. you, you were out there for sixty days, yeah. Uh, on that park was only there for three days. No, but, I mean, uh, but in but India. But in Thailand. In Thailand. Oh, sorry, that was, that was Thailand. Yeah, yeah, India, I didn't see any elephants. I saw lots of cows, though. Was there camels? In India? I don't know. Is there camels in India? No. I feel like that was a That's stupid thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> so you ride any camels? <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe I'm totally mixing things up. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Their cows are weird, too. They don't look like our cows. First of all, they treat their cows eerily well. They're like dogs, almost. I saw a cow walk. They treat them as pets. Yeah, they, well, but pets that have free range to do whatever they want. It's like your friend that has that totally misbehaved dog, and it just jumps on people, and they're like, "Ah, oh, he's so cute," you know, and they don't respect any boundaries. Jesus. There was cows, massive cows, just walking into grocery stores and just like grabbed a bag of chips and walked out of there. And the the, the clerk is like, "Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't stop him or something." It was insane. Wow. I won't get into that though. That's we're really off topic. I think uh, there hasn't been a topic. There has. I feel like we've just jumped from all over the place yeah. here. Talking we, about we were it. just doing an ad lib type. Yeah, like we, yeah, dude. We just need to chill. I'm not. I'm not. Not be so intentional and. Yeah. Well, let me tell you about India then, boys. Because India, I don't know if you're ever planning on going. What do we have for time? We're Hard technically at about 58, but we probably started. I don't know, 15 in. 10, what, 15 a, in. what about actual time? So I would probably say... Well, no, I mean, like, what's the time? Oh, what's the actual time? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if I uh, do some science... There we go. Quarter after ten. Quarter after ten, yeah. I say we we gab on for maybe another half hour. We're not going to do any edit today anyways, because I got my kids for a day. Uh, so we gab on. now, like, eight? Eight. This is where we need to, like, cue the applause music. Yeah. 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 We, need, we need one of those guys that does sound effects and shit. Dude, I have, a, like, I have an entire directory of sound effects. But they're free ones, so they're really cheesy. Like, it could be one dude. Yay. How how would that work? How does that speaking, work? Speaking, I know I'm kind of off a little bit, but still same. But speaking of sound effects, it was really cool. I went to Studio Bell here this mm. past week. First time I haven't been. And they have a room, and I can't remember what the name of this device was back in the 1920s when they had uh, uh, soundless movies. Uh, they had a guy basically like a or it's like an organ with all the switches and and keyholes and everything and then it's a whole room of all different types 
drums, uh, glockenspiel, everything. And this guy <laughs> would sit there and he go, "What I would, what what they would do in the nineteen twenties is a movie would be there. You wouldn't have any time with it. You'd have just notes. So scene one is about this long, and play something whimsical, and, and play something whimsical." That's you know huh. that's what it is. So they they'd Amazing. sit there and they would make it up as they go, but pulling different levers, making different sound effects, different. You have to things. know that machine so intimately. You have to know what whimsical sounds like. I have no idea. <laughs> Touche, man. Touche. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't even know. So that, one that movie. Was a bit whimsical. So <laughs> one movie would be different than the next, then, right? Uh, because it depends on who's playing the. Play that's kind of how whimsical. it went, though. Right? It was like these. And back in 1920, they said this was sold for $10,000 in 1920. So it would be worth now. And it only lasted a few years because, like, I think they said five or six years later, Sound and Film came out. Hmm. So they just turned it. They spent all this money on this movie. They they made this movie. Maybe a lot of it just got turfed. So the one that's at the Studio Bell came out of a a theater in in Washington State, was purchased by someone, fixed it up, and then it got sold to someone else. Who was practicing their organ, did it in their house in their garage, like cut out their walls so they could hear, you know, everything, and then it got donated to Studio Bell. It's just different technology. Like you look mm. at it today, going now, it's just like movie theaters. The guy he sets everything up and everything. Just, there you go, it's done. And, and he watches the movie. Can I comment on the fact that it's kind of like are you allowed to swear on this podcast? Yeah, it's fucked that somebody was able to figure out a sound that you don't normally hear in nature. That elicits an emotion from a human being, okay? Because when you watch these horror movies and they have that like eerie oh, music the, in the background, shit. where the shit did that come from? When actual things are scaring me, like I'm in the woods or like walking alone at night, I'm not hearing in the background like, <laughs> you know, like no, that stuff's happening. So, but I'm still feeling terror. But now I'm watching a horror movie and some guy just has this weird sound in the back and it's just making what it about worse. The, what about the Jason fucking? Ch- See, here's one for you to try. Here's one for you to try next time. Watch Jaws and turn the volume off, or mute it. You're basically watching Shark Week. (laughs) (laughs) But it's it's that dude, dude. Dude, it creates yeah, yeah, anticipation, yeah. anxiety. Yeah. What's yeah, going to yeah. happen? Something's going to happen. Boom. It's amazing what yeah. sound does to us. Yeah, 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 there was yeah. even one. I remember I was with my friend in the movie theater, and you know how you're like kind of outside the movie theater. Maybe the movie's over, or you're about to go into yours. But there's other movies that are playing, and there was one movie that was playing that just had like this music yeah, that yeah. was in the background, and it was like it just kept building and it kept repeating itself, and it was just like intriguing. It w- it, it elicited a feeling of like curiosity, but like sort of like um. A foreboding curiosity. I was like, "What is this? What is this?" It was like this. I have to know. But I don't want to know. But I don't want to go know. Yeah. And then my other friend came on. She's like, "Fuck that music." <laughs> well, I have to know. It's almost like this universal. Did you go sound. check it out? No. no. Oh. It was some movie. I don't remember what it was. But it was just like it wasn't That's our good. movie. So I feel like where this conversation's going, we should get more high. <laughs> I haven't gotten high at all. This is bullshit. Just got some creamless coffee. You were uh, cream, cream, cream you were cream. late. You don't smoke inside your house, do you? Yeah, I do. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> Wakefield does it. Yeah, yeah he well, actually contacted Oh my me. god, that guy, like... Oh yeah, for what? Just to, like, say hi, what's up? Well, he hasn't contacted us. I know, I gotta text that motherfucker. That was a while ago, to be fair. To be fair. I don't have my tools. Uh, I got a guy that's running a production company in Calgary. He's just like, I don't know what the deal is, but he runs a parkour gym there slash gymnasium. He took all of his money and he invested it in this production company where he wants to make action videos and stuff. I have no idea what the markup on that is. I can't wow. imagine it's very much. Um, but obviously that's a jam. You know, that's what I want to do with Alden. And he just sent me a message. I think he was one of the other guys that called me uh, and interrupted the podcast. So I'm excited to see where that goes. Cause totally, man. More work. That's right? awesome. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, we were saying, or, or uh, David was telling me, I didn't realize you made all your own videos. So they're like, they're pretty sweet. I'm, I try, man, but it's like, I ain't good at it. And it's all cell phone footage. But there's some people that make videos for me. And then you can see the difference in production quality. Well, yeah, it's of nice. course. But let's not go there. We don't. I don't have to have a conversation with you about you not being good at it. <laughs> Compared to what? I'm being lousy. Right? Like, you're not, you're not fucking making a Stallone movie, bro. I'm trying you're to putting, make a Stallone no, movie. No, I get that. But you're on a cell phone and you're putting a video <laughs> together that's compelling enough to have somebody watch it. The funny thing was right? when I made one of these videos, we were in India, in the amusement park where we had the stunt contract. And these guys, it's like 
it's like no one's in charge of you. That's the craziest thing. It's like no one is in charge. So things just happen randomly, and no one seems to be able to do anything about it. And whenever we would try to film, one of the guys had this brilliant idea. It's like, we should film at nighttime. Because when we film at nighttime, it's quiet. There's, no, there's nobody there. Because because you're white, you're instantly a celebrity. So you can't do anything there without drawing a crowd. Even if you're just standing there minding your own business, you're drawing a crowd of people. Especially if you're in southern India where there's not a lot of tourism. So in an amusement park that's always busy, it's nuts. Like, th- and, and then we're going to do stunt fighting and acrobatics. Like You draw a huge crowd. And the people are coming over there. They're coming over to you right when you're in the middle of filming just because they want to shake your hand and you can take them right back. There's no common sense. Like autograph. Them. Yeah, like you could be right in the middle of something and they just come running in there and be like, <laughs> like they do just they, want your attention. Do they think because, you're like, is it because you're different or is it because you're white and they, th- they automatically think you're a celebrity? I, I think it's both. I think it's because I'm doing something that they've never seen before and I'm a white person. And they've probably just got this narrative there that white people are wealthy and successful and, you know, unicorns and Huh. So the amount of because we you should have gone in with a horn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, wow. I grant your wishes. Yeah, and like they don't. I shall people. grant your wishes. I, I had I had people handing me like naked babies. I had people like babies. Yeah, I'd be there at the end of our show. We would go on the sidelines and just shake people's hands, and then people would just give me babies, but they had no clothes on. They You're were like naked babies. Uh, <laughs> So I'm holding a naked baby. I'm like, what's Who going owns on? This baby? <laughs> yeah. And I don't even know whose baby it is. It was just like a hand with a child yeah. and they handed it to me. And You're like looking down like what? It was so nuts. And they would do this thing where they basically like they'd kiss their mouth but then they'd touch your face. It was such a mess that happened. Um, so and that was every single day. Did you not you should have said to them, Have you guys not heard of the Me Too movement? What the fuck is going on around here? <laughs> Most of them speak English, so they were like just <laughs> no, nodding. Just... And when they nod they do this. So I never like I would take a photo with them and I'm like, Did you like it? And they're like So I'm always like I felt like everyone was like unsatisfied with the images that they got, but that's how they say yes. It took me a while. I have someone I work with that does that, and I never understood it. That's how they I was say told yes. that's how they yeah, they kind of do like so they, they bob, like they bobble their head back and forth. Yeah. And it, huh. it gets you dizzy after a while if you're trying to follow those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, you know, it's, do you like it? <laughs> Tell us about the uh, the play that you enacted, the the theater performance that you enacted. What what was it? You guys you ever watched Prince of Persia: Sands of Time? It's an actual movie. I mean, I don't remember much of it. It's but literally bad. I have ripped it off so bad. In my mind, but what it probably. It's, I didn't even know. Give it's us like, a general plot. It, it's th- that movie is uh, not the movie of your. But, but that's the plot. <laughs> Basically, like you wouldn't you wouldn't remember that movie. It wasn't that amazing. So I'm going into this play, and I'm like, I'm um, I'm um, Kazim. I'm like this a thief, you know, parkour thief, because that's what parkour people do. We're all thieves. Oui. Apparently, <laughs> still shit. You're a cat burglar. <laughs> and so they get. I'm the first one that goes on the the set, you know, and. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to do any of this shit. I'm not like a real actor. I'm a stunt guy, so I don't really know what I'm doing. And I come in late to this show, so I have no context. And they throw me into this show after like one day. And I'm like, well, I don't know the choreography. It's like, yeah, you'll figure it out. <laughs> that's it's awesome. a run of people. It's like the worst time to figure it out. But that's what they do in theater. Is it's just like there's so many shows you have to do that you know either you're not going to be in the show and it's not going to be that good. Or you're in the show and you make a bunch of dumb mistakes, but you learn from them so that the next show you do, you don't end up doing that. The, yeah, that's a choice to me. And that's the choice. And yeah. the, the one thing I kept screwing up the most was this fucking dance. They had this like Indian dance number and I could not get the beat for the longest time. So I was off on everything. And I was just that one guy, you know, in the corner that just doing his own thing. <laughs> that's awesome. Everyone's looking at me was like. Was there any video of that? Dude, yes, there's lots of video. <laughs> That's brilliant. The Mirage guys who run the entertainment company who hired me are actually doing another big compilation about it. Uh, but I took a lot of video myself. I've just been like dragging my heels to put together kind of like the whole experience, you know, what it was like. The story, yeah. The story is so, based, the so, story is based so you're life. a thief, parkour thief. I'm a parkour thief who wields dual axes that he never Beautiful. uses for some reason. That he never <laughs> uses. I never get to use it. In fact, anytime I have a weapon, something happens and then I fight with my bare hands. So I don't even know what the deal is, but... It's like they never really worked that hard into the play. But I go on there, and it's kind of <laughs> – I do all this pointless shit. Like I'm on top of this building, and I like fall down on top of this like table and move around you know, because there's music playing to this as well, and I'm trying to synchronize it. And then there's this like action moment where it's kind of like a beat, and so I do a front flip off the table. And then all the people in the background are like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> They've never seen that, I guess. I don't know. And uh, then I call my friend over, and she's like the other evil doer. 
and uh, her name is Roxanne, and she's she's with my friend Lorraine plays her, and she's like a pretty built power lifter, you know, so she's kind of like a super muscular girl, and they've never seen that shit either because normally it's it's a very conservative society, right? So she comes out. No lifting she's, weights allowed. Yeah, she's yeah, no lifting weights allowed. <laughs> <laughs> you must remain weak. We need someone may dominate you. <laughs> But she comes out all like muscular and stuff like that, and it's just we have like kind of a relationship where she's a little higher on the total pull than I am, so she'll like shove my face whenever I do something that you know whatever she doesn't like. And there's a sacred stone, and somehow this sacred stone powers this building. And the sacred stone is just kind of like out. Temple of Doom. It's exactly like Temple of Doom, cool. but with Prince of Persia costumes and music. And, right, it's and like set, Assassin's Creed meets Temple of Doom. Exactly, and, yeah, and, and this stone that's so powerful and, and important is like in an unlocked box sitting in the middle of the village. Excellent, <laughs> perfect spot for it. <laughs> <laughs> no one would ever think. No one will ever steal this sacred <laughs> stone. Right? Oh, oh, that's, that's good. That's being, yeah, so that's they, we steal the stone, and then this basically becomes this back and forth bit of like the good guys versus the bad guys. And, uh, the good guys are the two local villagers, and He's one of the guys is played by my friend Kevin who lives in New York, and uh, this guy's so funny. Like he's just you know you meet people that are just naturally funny, like the way that they their mannerisms, their facial expressions. He can do all these different voices, uh, so he can become like a totally new person. And you're just you don't even know you just like entertain just watching it happen. You're like <laughs> <laughs> you want to be part of it, Squirming but you don't really know seat. how. <laughs> yeah, he was amazing at that stuff, and he played uh, the comic relief, and he had bits where like. He'd just be a goof and he'd walk into like a pail and he's like, Arr! and he'd drop everything he's holding and launch the pail up into the <laughs> air. And he would nail it every time because he was just funny. He just had a funny presence. These people have never seen like the Three Stooges, so he's just ripping off shit from the sink. Totally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he ripped and anything he could rip off, he ripped off. This was not an original play with the That's one awesome. plot into it. it. It was very basic. That's awesome. And then, so it surprised me. And you did that every day for 60 days, right? Like, not the full 60 days. Not full because I was late. I came in late. But I basically had to work twice as hard to catch up with everybody because everybody had all this Was time it seven it. days that you did that show? Yeah, uh, dude, it was longer, way longer than that. I had to do it five times or four times a day, every day, except oh, for the weekends shit. where I had to do it five times. And it was nonstop until I was there, until I left. And the weather was like, in the morning, our first show, well, the afternoon, it was like plus 40 out. And I'd like Dude. I'd step out there, and I, I was wearing a whole costume. Like what I'm wearing now is kind of what I was wearing, like a sweater Jesus. and a shirt with like long baggy pants. I'm like, are you kidding me? I gotta go out and I gotta do sword fighting and acrobatics and shit while wearing you did that this. For like, how many days? Basically, did around 24 days. So, and how how long was the play? Each play was about 30 minutes, and and they really wow. they really um gave you the right amount of time. Because the minute you're out there and the sun's on you, it's like you have like, sorry, I keep saying this. You have like two minutes before you have no energy left because it just sucks it out of you. And it's also just really humid. So totally. you're sweating, but you're not even really sweating your own sweat. It's just the moisture in the air, which causes you to sweat even more. So you're just, none of this stuff's wicking off of you. So you're just kind of like. So you're just perpetually you're wet. You're just like this giant <laughs> ball of sweat, right? And it's like, Jesus. you'd see my costume like before I would go in and then see it after. And it's just like drenched in my sweat. I never touched any water that whole show. In fact, I was rolling around in the sand, so I should be even drier. But I was just, just my color of my costume turned until the darkness was in. Wow. I go in light blue, and it's like I'm out dark blue. You know, like the whole thing is just so. Wow, that's so insane. What, what was the? Give me a breakdown of your day. Like, what does one day look like? Well, I would wake up in the morning, and it would be, it would be just like freezing cold in my room because the air conditioners are all broken. So either they don't work or they just turn on to full volume, you know, full max output. So you're just like, and they don't give you a blanket. They give you like a dinner table cloth. You, like a, you have like a, yeah, like a dinner table cloth. And a that's table cloth. wrapping yourself into something this thick. And so I'm just like, I'm like freezing in my room. And then I go outside and I'm like, ah, like it's, you're going from like such extreme temperatures that it, it honestly just takes a toll on your body. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. Just going freezing cold is super hot. And, uh, yeah, I'd wake up, and I'd do my stretches, and then I would head towards uh, the set location, and i always have to walk, because they kind of just opened up the doors at this time. Because we'd go out, and, sorry, we'd get our food first. Uh, it was always, like, the same food. So that was the other hard thing of, like, working in India. It's like, you like chicken and rice? Because you're going to eat it every day, two times a day, until you leave. And if you complain about it, we'll make it worse. We'll put mint in your rice. <laughs> <laughs> you have minty rice, chicken rice. Wow. It was rough. Every now and then they'd make us better food, like especially the breakfast was the only time we had good food. They had like made this thing called Bombay toast, which is like their version of pancakes, and 
then we'd have eggs and they'd make these parathas you know grilled cheese sandwiches in fact they would make food sometimes that you were like do you think this is just what a, an american person would want to eat because they got wonder bread and they put a bunch of weird fruit on it but then they slathered in mayonnaise just give it to us like that's what we would eat we just want fucking mayonnaise and all of this shit fruit's good too there's sugar in there throw fruit mayonnaise white bread here you go eat this. and i'm like oh, oh gross. i couldn't even bite it i'm like I'm yeah. good. <laughs> I'm good. Is this is what they think U.S. people want. And, and you uh, also, you know, is it near the end of your trip? You got a little under the weather too. No, oh, that was a terrifying experience. Actually, I thought <laughs> I was gonna die. <laughs> Hold on, before you, before you tell us about how you almost died, finish your day. So oh yeah, you yeah, right. Get up, eat breakfast, do your stretches, okay, all that stuff. Do my stretches and, and generally connect with everybody. <laughs> there was one guy there who we all hated because he was just that guy. I think actually, looking back on it, he must have had autism or something. But it was just the dude that like. Was, would criticize everything you did and just like make you feel like garbage. And was then, he like a part of the show? Or? He was. He was the main villain, and he was just like the most insufferably. Uh, he's not very talented, but he would brag about everything he did, mm. and he would always. So he's actually like he's the perfect villain. He, he is both in the show and in real life. Huh. So you actually got to do some method acting because you're like, I actually fucking hate this. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't hate him. He's my boss. That's the other thing. It's like I'm kind of his like evil doer. I'm like, yeah. and the thing is, he was also trying to connect with us. But everybody at this point just liked his personality so much. And it's not that he meant to be a dick. He just doesn't He's just completely know. unaware He's of it. He's completely oblivious See? to how dickish he is. And so we're all feeling kind of guilty too because we kind of know that. But like you give the dude a little inch and it suddenly turns into like full-blown dick mode. You're like, I can't. I can't this guy. <laughs> just a, just that giant human-sized penis sitting right beside you. You're like, wow. <laughs> yeah, this man. is my life for the next 24 days. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was rough. Stop looking at me. <laughs> So, so, yeah, basically, in the end, we're all like, stop looking at us. Like, we just were so tired of the shit that we couldn't deal with it anymore. Because uh, the guy would, like... That's an interesting skit, too. A big dick who just doesn't get along with him. <laughs> tries to, but doesn't get along with him. And, and, he's so, and he's so sad about it. He's like, why don't they like me? Like, he tries to be good, but he really just doesn't realize how bad he is. Oh. Anyways, we would, we would generally... He'd come out and be like... We would, like, all get up and leave. Just do the most passive-aggressive shit ever. Not because I enjoyed it. It's just it was easier than engaging with the guy. And wow. having to explain again how he's like being an asshole or being or what he's saying doesn't make sense or this or that. Wow, that sounds um, awesome. Yeah, that, so that wasn't a big part of the day. But then I would go to set and then I'd have to walk through like just it always amazed me. This amusement park was like the Callaway Park. Like you're looking at Callaway Park if it had been run down thirty years from now. Like it's just wow. everything's like not working great. You got like equipment that's breaking down, things are being held together by string. You're like, is that safe? You know, like, is that supposed to work that way? They don't have metal bars set wow. fastening in. It's a leather belt, and not like a new one. It's like that belt that you used to wear to the meetings that was wearing out, and like this is notches. definitely gonna snap off if I fall out of this thing. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, dude. It's like the rides are so sketchy. Wow. Um, what kind of ride? Like the, was the, there like, like a roller coaster? And... Yeah, they they weren't huge ones. They had like they had like a Ferris wheel that spun. Like it spun. It was the weirdest thing, and it would just go so fast. <laughs> it was this thing that just kicks into high gear and spins. And you're like, you just see the. We did it. Did at you go time. in them? Oh yeah, yeah, I went into a couple you're of them. Jesus. And then and then I you, you see like it's the middle of the night, so you're seeing like the city behind you just like waiting. And I just like took a video where I was just looking at my friend Trevor, and he was just saying the most messed up things that came to his head. While he was looking like just stone cold at the camera, and behind him just this constant moving like you know Flintstone reel of like the city lights and stuff. Wow, it was it was fun. That's awesome. Anyways, the point is I wouldn't recommend going on those rides. But everybody was there. They were packed. That place was packed, man. It was so insane. Really? It was like if Callaway Park. It's like if everyone in Calgary wanted to go to Callaway Park all the time. Can you imagine like the wow. chaos? Yeah, so it was always surprisingly busy every day of the week. So what's that? You're, so you so you go to the park. It's crazy there. I gotta walk through all those people. And they and they want to. Did they touch they're you? Like, and they're all just like, what? Oh my what? god! And it, in the beginning, it was kind of novel. I'm like, what's right? Stuntman, you want to be entertained, man. everybody? But yeah. after like midway point, I'm like, just stop, stop, please, because they will get right in your face and just like. As you well, walk it's, by. it's definitely strange that they don't have any. Well, they don't have like huh. this, you know, that social barrier, right? They're like just looking right at you. Well, it's right like the same for you as if you've seen. I mean, it's not. It's hard to really have any. We're, perspective we're on less it. impacted by that because we've experienced many types of yeah. people. Yeah, we're maybe, also, maybe we're also voyeurs here. 
Yeah, yeah. We, we, watch, we pay each other to watch them we're creeping like, over <laughs> like like that rather than. I wish like, I got a picture of that. Being yeah. right in people's faces. And and oh, that's the thing, God. right? Like, uh, what's what is like a perspective that he can have? Because imagine just a person. It would be like if we saw an indigenous tribesman walking through downtown Calgary. Yeah, he's got like a loincloth. And he's just wearing a loincloth with a spear, and he's got that huh. stuff on his face. And you'd be like, what? you'd just be kind of like, what? You know? Yeah, it was right. like that. And they'd be like, okay, where's the cameras? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And where's Ashton? Are they rebooting Punk? <laughs> I'm being Punk right now. Yeah, we would have, and so sometimes you just, even if you were chilling for a few minutes, you'd have people come up to you and want to just take your photo and stuff. Wow. And I got so tired of it at the Taj Mahal, which shouldn't really have happened there because there's so many like ethnic groups that visit that place. It's a world wonder. I was like, you know what? I want to take your photo. I was just going up to people and be like, I want your photo. Because they would always do it to me first. I'd be like, so before they would do it to me, I would see them coming up to me. I'd be like, sir, 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 can I have your photo, please? <laughs> just to see. Did you? Of course. Did That's they great. understand you? No, they're like, they're like, yeah, this is perfect. You know, this is exactly what I wanted. So yeah, you can have my photo. Yeah, it was just because you get tired of it and you want to, you know, when something so you, happens. So you to experienced you, what it would be like to be a celebrity, kind of. Kind of. I don't know if I was a celebrity or just an oddity. <laughs> you know, like, how do you define the difference? Actually, there? that's a better description. Probably, yeah, 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 it wasn't probably. like I had a horde of people, like, trying to get my autograph and stuff. The people that sh- saw my show, we would go to some restaurants, and they would be the owner. And be like, oh, we watched, we watched your show. It was amazing, you know? But uh, they had seen the show. But walking out in Chennai, there's just so many people that I don't even think the majority of them went to see the show, even though there were so many people that watched it. So they are just seeing me as a white dude. They have no context of what I do or who I am. Mm-hmm. And they're like, you know, so I must have just been like a bizarre, you know, like an oddity thing. Like, yeah, totally. Like woman, bearded woman type of deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Maybe that's what they thought you were. Oh my God. God is that kind of, yeah. I'm not going to say <laughs> the funny races. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my experience, you know, like doing that. I got to walk through all those people every day to get to the set location. And, um, oh and so God. that you got to, you got to cope with that. You're like, okay, now I have to walk and be gawked at the whole time I go to set. <laughs> that's awesome. You know? And, uh, then I get to set and I'm the pyrotechnician. This is actually something I was stoked on. We had this thing called a dragon's tooth, and it would just shoot a spire of fire, like crazy, crazy high. We got it as high as like 20 feet. It was nuts. It was so unsafe. Everything was so unsafe <laughs> at this place. I'm just like, this set could have burnt down. And the only reason I was okay with it was the stunt coordinator was a guy from the U.S., and he's worked with like Chuck Norris and Steven Seagal, and he's done a lot of B-movie action stuff. So like he's done all this. He knows how it works. In fact, when he was showing me some of my stunts that like terrified the shit out of me, He's like, I'll do it first. And this is like a 60-year-old man who's like 100 pounds overweight who has like what? every bad habit under the sun. And he just he just does it because he's, I don't know. He just it, knows. He just knows. He's done so much of it. And it instilled so much confidence in me being like, well, if an old man can do this, <laughs> obviously I can do this. Wow. Like what kind of bad habits? <laughs> well, he said, he's, he said he did like every drug ever when he was younger. And he just, he doesn't do it now, but it's like he doesn't even drink water. He was like saying, I just can't drink water. As he's sipping a Coca Cola in India, when there's like oh plus forty my. degrees, and he's sixty years old, so I'm surprised like, he's not dead yet. Yeah, Jesus, I'm like, and even he was like, I'm surprised I'm not dead yet. But I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, good attitude. At least you're aware of it. Yeah. And I, but I love Red. He's an awesome guy, and he taught me a lot. He was a great mentor. That's no, that sounds awesome. Like you definitely want a sixty year old overweight man doing the stunt in front of you and successfully and just walking away like yeah, you're like oh. I'm definitely doing this now. And the funny thing is, because the one stunt I'm referring to is this ladder gag where I basically have to climb this massive ladder at the end of the show where I'm like trying to pursue them. How high stunt. was this? Like, 15, it, it was 20? like 15, 20 feet. You yeah. know, so it's high off the ground. Yeah. Uh, and it's and it's not like you know the ladders we use at Home Depot where they're like, and they're kind of yeah. It's this a is like a metal ladder, ladder oh. and it's like something from the pirate era. So it's just like you're going on and wobbling, like, and, and it's sitting on top of a balcony that's just plywood. So the balcony's moving while the whole ladder's moving. The whole oh, set's fucking dear. moving. Like, you know, you're kind of like, I hope this stays together and doesn't just fall apart. And so I got to go to the top of the ladder. And then Kevin, the comedic relief guy, he punches me in the face. And then he, like, pushes the ladder. He kicks it. Like, in the beginning, he just pushed the ladder. Uh, and we have to be comfortable with this because I'd have to go up there. And I needed him to tell me I was good. Because if he pushed me before I had my hands on, I would just fall <laughs> you know, to my back or whatever. So he pushes me, and in the background behind the kind of food cart is a. Uh, it looks like kind of a box, a big bunch of boxes and crates, but it's actually a porta peg, like a trash pad. So um, okay. you just hit the trash pad, and so once you get over the the adrenaline of like falling blindly backwards into like what seems like a building, wow. then you just uh, hit the trash pad and you're okay. And the only thing you have to worry about is like your whiplash because your head will always whip back, so you kind of always have to engage these muscles. Um, 
but the experience was, was fun because you go up there and yeah, like, yeah, totally. And you're also doing it for a crowd, so you have to act right. Like yeah. you have to look at them and be like, <sighs> like you have to make it look like it's a big comedy skit. And right. then and later we started refining it so that um, he would punch me in the face, and then he would like push the ladder out just to a point where I'm balancing, like just in the center. And then as the last kind of like gag, he like stuck his foot out and touched the toe, and then that's what set me over. And then that's when I would scream to the audience. And in the end, coordinators and directors loved it because it was like, it just was obviously in, in creating, creating more risk. Yeah, that good for you. That's awesome, man. That's yeah. wicked. I can yeah. totally picture it too. Yeah, you just fall backwards on this thing and, and you bounce What do you off do with balance. the ladder? How high? Like you're still holding on to the ladder when you come down, right? Whole time. But I started getting comfortable with it. So what I do is I'd lock my legs in to like the sides of the bars so that I could lift my hand up because it's a, this is also the ending part of the show. The main builder, the main evil doer, is sitting at, on the top roof, and he's kind of like sticking his hand down at me. Because even though this guy was insufferable, I still tried to like have some kind of connection with him because he's also my partner. Like I'm working with him, yeah. and I'm like, how can we improve the quality of the show? You know, and it's like, well, we can interact with each other. And then that was one idea we came up with. But that involved me having to like hold on to a ladder with one or no arms as I'm falling down. Right. And I don't want to fall just straight down and then have a ladder fall on me. Because this is like a 100-pound wow. metal ladder. But I, I got it. You know, you do this. The thing about stunts is when you do them like over 100 times, the adrenaline and the fear is like, it's just gone. It's no different than walking or any yeah, other yeah. thing you're used to doing. Yeah, right. Yeah. And he had a wow. way harder one than me. He had to jump off the roof of a building to a port to an airbag. And he had to be dead center on it. Because if you jump too far, you just land into a pile of like wood and plaster. And what probably, a... you know, paralyze yourself. So he's jumping onto this airbag that's dead center of this, uh, and it's like a crazy height. It's only like 30 feet or something. Like, it was nuts. Wow. I look at it, and I'm like, I ain't doing that. That's Not doing it for the amount of money you guys are paying. Sorry. That's crazy, man. Holy shit, dude. Yeah. Wow, man. Good for you. And you're here, and you're chilling. Yeah. Wow. And, shit. And, it, and, and the whole thing was a really basic play that would seem like it would be catered to kids. You know, like there's some bad guys. They steal some stones. The good guys come. The hero comes. You know, he's like a traveling, wandering, you know, person. He's a nomad. And then he's capable of all this crazy, you know, abilities like acrobatics and stuff. And then the evildoers are also like doing stunts, like with zip lining. Or one guy I light on fire. I actually light a dude on fire. You lit a dude on fire Not four completely. times a day? Four times a day. Or five times or a day, five, depending four on the Four or five times a day. It was that Kevin guy, again, the funny comedic dude. Because, of course, he's the one being lit on fire. Because it's like, ah! You know, like he's the Joker. So he comes out and he has to like basically ask for help from the audience. And I think the parents were more terrified because they're like, this dude is literally on fire. But the kids would always laugh because they have no context of the danger. They assume everything's Jesus okay. They're like, ah! they would lose it. And there'd be a lot of kids in the audience who so would always be losing it. This motherfucker's on fire. This motherfucker's on fire. Help him. And then the best part was like the hero comes out, Creeper comes out, and he's like, here's some water and then he grabs it and of course he says thanks i was thirsty and then he drinks it instead of using it on himself and so that also blows everyone's mind oh, that's like, another oh, God, another God. good one yeah. hitting them hard and, and that's the thing is now he has to act casual oh, while on fire while his ass is on fire and he was always telling me like make it like a big one and he's like always wanted it big i don't know why because i think having to do so many of them you kind of want to like take care of yourself and be more safe and i just soaked this thing in like gasoline Put it on him, and then we let him on fire. He runs out, and he's like, Bleh! and it's big. And the longer he's out there, the more it starts to pick up. So as he's like, walking, it's like licking his hair, and he's got like a ponytail. And I'm like, oh, so hold on, like that his insane. back is on fire. Like what's on fire? So you have something called a butt pack. Lighting your whole back on fire is crazy because it turns from your back being on fire to your whole body being on fire. I've seen a few videos where where this you've done like on. the yeah, actual the movement and. To like try and put yourself out and shit. It's yeah, pretty yeah. intense. It's like you're not fire. you're not actually trying to put it out. You're just you're making it look like ah, I'm on fire. <laughs> Holy shit! And you're just sort of like. But what happens is any time you move, you're building that fire. Yep. And because it's on fire because of accelerant, you can't inhale that shit because it'll like knock it out. So you're basically like holding your breath while you're moving around and just trying to get your face out of the flames so that you could grab like a gasp of air in case he wants you to do it for a bit longer. But the, the crazier thing is you don't feel anything. You just, you're just like this. It's like normal. You so you don't actually heat. know it's there. But, it, but if you start, when you start to feel that it's there, you're too late. Because now it's actually burning you. 
So uh, it's a real like crazy like. You won't kill anything thing. unless you do, and if you do, you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it becomes more of like how much time has it been? Like you're really just timing how wow. long you're doing it for, as opposed to like ah. I'll just My brother's out. insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's an insane person. He lights people on fire. I, well, I, he lights I, himself I, on. Fire. He falls off buildings yeah, with I ladders. Felt, I felt like. I, I love to live vicariously through you, though, because you, you have so many, you do so many crazy things. <laughs> so you did that four times a day. Five times on the weekend. Five times on, okay, we and got then, it, bro. And then I had, the I had to also uh, <laughs> be responsible for the pyro thing, right? Because that's the bit. It's so like, when is that, this, when is that so, so there's this part where they're like, there's like a dynamite, you know, they're like, we're going to blow up the building in order to like flush out the guy who has the stunt, who at this point was that Kevin guy, right? He plays um, a character named... Uh, is it Paraz? I don't know. I can't. It's not. It's not coming to me right now. But uh, basically, they're playing back and forth with like a dynamite stick, and then there's this music playing that's like doo, 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 trying to like build up the intensity of this whole thing. Doo, 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 doo. I don't even know. Yeah, it's so like cool. it's straight from like that Prince of Persia movie. Um, it's like a super classic theatrical, like intense. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. You know, like you're, they're just like there's a pause in it where someone realizes they have the dynamite, ah, and they react and then oh they're running God. around this trying to get like, someone else a dynamite. Yeah, this is perfect. Bro. And it was like they had a sparkler and everything, so this huge sparkler was going off, and they tried to to like the spark almost diminished. They throw it into this building that then kind of right. like hits this recycling bin. Uh, they trigger all this smoke, and then this explosion happens over the over the sound effects, and then I have to engage the fire team. But it was such a stressful experience because sometimes it just wouldn't work. So many things just wouldn't work at this play. We'd have like rolling power outages. So like right in the middle of our dance number, it's like, boom, there's no sound, there's nothing. And we're like, <laughs> you know, sometimes we didn't even remember our dialogue. So we're just like, I don't remember what to say or do now. Like it was crazy. And then Jesus everyone's just watching me still like, continue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't notice the yeah, music and, ends and, and all lights are out. Like, but that's the thing is like in the city they had this all the time. It wasn't just the theme park; it was the city. So the rides would all be out. So everybody's like, <laughs> like upside oh down. God. And so what are they doing? They're looking at the play because okay, now there's nothing this, else to look at, right? What you're describing sounds like the skit. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> right, people. I can that. You're like upside down on some ride. You're like, oh man, what are they doing over there? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what else are you gonna do? Talk about how you're not moving? No, this sucks. Yeah, you can only do that oh for so long. Oh my god. That's hilarious, man. That's and, awesome. But actually, those moments were some of my favorite moments because we just were improvising. And it led yeah. to a lot of hilarious What an stuff. experience. The worst, actually, was when my pants came off. And I was like... <laughs> so, and this, is, this, this produced so much anxiety for every show after. I don't know what happened, but I'm wearing these baggy pants. And at some point, like I had to go out and fight the hero. And what my bit was is I have to dive over this box. And when I hit the box, I'm about to fight him. And then I notice I have no weapons, which at this point makes no sense. Because the whole time they saw me, I had like axes. I like spinning axes <laughs> around. Then I come out with nothing. I'm like, ah, shit. So there's a bunch of weapons that... Uh, the dumbest was... hero ever. <laughs> <laughs> I had axes, but I, I left them. I only know how to spin the them. I don't really know how to fight with them. So they're the problem. Yeah. So I have, to, I have to go and get a weapon. And it's like past him. So he comes at me, he throws a punch, I roll under him, I grab the weapon, and I'm like, aha, now I have it. Well, at the part where I'm facing him, this is what I realized, my pants were falling down, they were like, because you know that feeling, you've got your legs. Uh-oh. You try to spread your legs. <laughs> That's exactly what I did, yeah. I spread my legs as wide as I could, but that meant I couldn't do any of my stunts. Because if I roll, that's my pants right off. Like, I'm going to roll <laughs> You should have just rolled with it. I know, yeah. it's like part of my pants. But the thing about India is they're super conservative. About, I, couldn't yeah, take my, I couldn't even take my shirt off. They'd the probably beach. throw stones at you. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, I'd be lynched or something. Like, <laughs> I don't know what would happen. Maybe they'd think it was funny. But it seemed pretty not okay for adults to be like, no, to, to show skin. Right? Right. Even if you were a dude. So that was just like going through my head like the whole time. So like well, I like kind of hobble towards him. This happened one time during one show. Happened one time during a show. Oh, okay, yeah. And I like I come I hobble towards Cheever because like you said my my legs are like spread wide open and I'm like I'm supposed to roll. He's probably he's, looking at you and like, he's just like <laughs> okay. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? This is so weird. And I told him because he asked he's like what's going on? I'm like my pants are falling off and he's the whole time he's trying not to laugh <laughs> while he's fighting me. And the worst That's part awesome. was I have to like one of my gags are you have to kick him. I kick him and he goes over. He goes over this railing into where the audience area is, right? 
and then I have to jump on top of the railing. And it's a railing's about this high off the ground. And once I'm on the railing, I have to jump off the railing into the air to do the classic, like, Sparta, mm-hmm. ah, intense slash. But my pants are coming off, and I can't get them back on, and I just I just didn't do that, honestly. I just, like, did this really lame, like, <laughs> climbing over it. I looked, like, the whole time. I think they could tell my pants were falling off, because the coordinator is, like, laughing. He was, like, <laughs> dying over there. I would be laughing too. <laughs> and so the whole the rest of the show, I'm just like my pants on, <laughs> just yeah. always checking on like triple check. Oh my god. Okay, so so then you would so you would, I would imagine you'd do the show. Then there's like a break in between, and then you do no. the show. No, no, it's just a whole show, <clears throat> one whole one whole go. Right. No, 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 no. I mean the the four. Oh, that's right. Four, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, we would do one show. <laughs> we would go out. Yeah, yeah come here, motherfucker. Again, <laughs> light that motherfucker on fire <laughs> right now. <laughs> The worst part about him is like his safety was like dubious because he basically just had, he had a bunch of his clothes just sitting in like a big bucket of lukewarm water because it's st- sitting outside and then he's got to pull it out and he's got to put it on himself. And I don't know if you guys have ever put on wet, warm clothes when you're tired. Oh, all the time. I have done that, but yeah, gross. <laughs> it's the worst experience. It takes all the energy out of you. Yeah. And he did that all the time and then had to be lit on fire. Really oh, that's how. Okay, I was gonna ask you. That like, was his how fire protection. This? Okay. He wore Nomex, which is like a flame retardant material for his underwear. And yeah. He pulled it all the way up to his back, and then he throws on all this wet, saturated clothes, and it wets his hair. Uh, because it's just the butt patch that's on fire, right? right. Uh, a whole back burn or a whole body burn would be totally different. He would have to have way more safety in place. Right. But a butt burn is honestly, I let my butt on fire and I did a backflip. It was awesome. Because I'm just like, I want to know what that looks like. He slow mo videoed it, and I'm like. That's cool. Oh, wow, man. Where, where are we at for time? Who says that? Uh, 10.58, 10.11. Oh, shit. So we're moving past a half an hour. Okay, Bye. Good. We're connecting, guys. This is I know. good. Just you know, Joe Rogan could. and Alex Jones and Eddie Bravo went for four hours. <laughs> yeah, but I got to I got to. I wish I could do an Alex Jones impersonation right now just because you said that name. But, uh, how do we want to? Well, like, I, I just I do want to because you. this has been great because I asked you how you start your day and then that sprung into a whole crap load of stories as you <laughs> didn't how your day it goes. My day went. No, no, you no, did. You did. But, it's but really just good. R- really, f- like stretched out. So, so you you do the shows. There'd be breaks, breaks in between. Yeah, well, and I also and had to then, do, I had to set the fire uh, too, right? So like, you had to fill up this big propane tank and uh, make sure that it had enough in it so that when it time the time came to ignite it, it would be like, and that's just to kind of complete, have some finalization on that. They throw the dynamite stick in. Right. There'd be the sound effects of the explosion. And then I would light uh, Parvis, was his name, was the character's name, butt on fire. He runs out there. But before I light him on oh, fire, after I've the... got to activate the dragon's tooth. Because there's the explosion, the dynamite's in the building, and it You've has to look like it blew up. Right? right. So there's a huge fire that goes in the air, and then the whole building spills with smoke, and then up comes this guy on fire. Ah! So the message is sold quite well. But sometimes that thing wouldn't work. And we'd have VIPs and, like, the mayor and, like, important people come to watch this show. And the coordinator just come up to me being like, you'd really like this show. So it was one of those things where I have no control over it. Like, you arm the master control panel, and the pilot light turns on. And because the weather conditions were so extreme, it just would switch off. So it would be all good to go. You're ready to ignite. And then right when I flip the switch, it turned off. The whole thing turned off. And it's like, now there's, like, no, there's the sound effects of the explosion. Nothing's happening. And I'm like, and sometimes I would set it off anyways, but it would be really late. Um, but then there was times where it's like there was so much tension and pressure built. And I'm like, oh, please, please, please just make this work. We want everything to kind of go without a hitch because there's like so many people out there and we have so many important people there too. Yeah. But then they did. They did work. Like uh, it, it worked. You know what I mean? Like I let them on fire. We, we have been crushing timings. it. Yeah, we've been crushing it. We've been doing like all of our – we've really been putting all of our energy into this show and getting great reactions. Like I did like a Sparta slash so hard into the ground that I shot sand into all the children's faces. And they're like, eh. Because I like I made it look like I was nuts, right? But we were in total control of what we were doing. It's just freaky when there's a lunatic right in front of you, like swinging a giant no, sword around. Cool. Like, that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, we nailed it, and it felt oh, that feeling of like flicking the switch and seeing the fire go off. Yeah, just to it's hear pretty it cool. And feel yeah, it, like, I'm right it underneath worked, it. it I'm like, that energy was just like. Burr. That's awesome, man. So you actually had some big, big shows, and there was big people there, and you actually made it happen. We had Bollywood people come and visit us. It was wow. so weird because at the end of the show, uh, we would have we'd go out there and we they'd introduce us as who we were and what our characters were, and then we just sit there, and then they come, the people come and they want our photos. It's always photos, like hundreds of photos, or just like shaking your hand or touch you. And usually the kids just want to like 
touch you. And before they had us outside of the arena, but they started getting worse and worse and worse. That it was literally like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom at the end, where all the kids were like, eh, just like swarming them. <laughs> it was pretty much that. Only it was fully grown people, and we're like being wow. pushed against bars. So we'd have to stand behind the bars and that then is shake crazy. our hands. We had Bollywood people come. Had no idea who this guy is, but he had a huge entourage, cameras, everything. Wow. Taking photos and he's like making it look like he's gonna kill me. Like he's like shaking my hand. He's got his fist like in my face. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I hope this doesn't make me look bad. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna write a newspaper article about you. Like he Bollywood action star beats American loser. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so then so that w- I don't know if like the times are right, but like what time you'd wrap up your day and then what 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 do you guys just chill at night or what? Yeah, we were usually really tired, and sometimes we were just like, and at this point, just covered in our own sweat. I'd have sand in my ear, sand in my eyes, sand in my pants, sand everywhere. So were your accommodations thing. decent then? Like you could cleaned up or no? I mean, yeah, we had like our own personal room, and we had uh, a shower, and I mean there was no Wi-Fi or nothing, but uh, it was uh, it was better than if we were in a hostel. For sure. So you had yeah. to do like laundry every night? Or no, no, go? but we would pay them. Like you could do your own laundry, which is what I did. I would wash it like by hand, which by the way sucked. I'm oh, so glad. Yeah. I'm so glad for laundry machines because having to do that, just take your dirty underwear and be like, <laughs> like <laughs> have to wash it in a big vat of gray water. Like <laughs> I wasn't a fan. But um, yeah, most of the time you're taking care of your own stuff. And then we would go to like in the mornings, we'd go to the convenience stores and stock up on stuff that we would want just for ourselves. But at the end of the show, we would go back. We'd generally have dinner. If the dinner was chicken and rice, which 90% of the time it was, we would go out usually to a restaurant. Uh, food people had watched our show and then gave us free stuff, which was always nice. Deadly. Um, but then we didn't really go out and do anything because it's not like it's the place you go out and do that. Right? Because it's so hot. Even at nighttime, it's just like it, you're just never not sweating. You're just always sweating all the time. You wow. just get used to it. So on one hand, this sounds like a trip of a lifetime. It was like deadly. And on the other hand, I'm like, wow. Wow. It's no, like, it was I'd rather hard, do man. anything else. Yeah, yeah. It, it was hard. Totally, totally. It's like, man, the experiences were fresh and unique and exciting, but also really hard. Yeah. It was like, I don't want to do another one of these shows. So Buddy had to get dressed, too, in those wet clothes very quick, hey? What do you mean? Well, when you're, you're, oh, you're yeah. doing Oh, yeah, he's like throwing it on him, and I'm just kind of wow. like waiting for him, right? I'm, I'm doing the master control switch stuff for the fire chief as well. So I have some things I'm doing, but honestly, my involvement in the show was, is, was the most minimal. Because I showed up so late. But then the, the director, the guy that put it all together, he said originally he wanted me to be the hero. And I saw what the hero had to do. And I'm so glad that wasn't me. Because I don't think I could have done that. <laughs> I don't think I literally had enough energy to like do that safely. Because right. he was like, doing shit all the time. Wow. wow. Nuts. Yeah, That's I, crazy. I was so crazy. glad. So uh, we may as well put this in because I know we're going to wrap it up here. But uh, you are for hire, correct? I am. Yes. Optimal Movement is a stunt agency. And we do... Uh, you know, independent film and hopefully more, uh, you know, union film because union film is awesome. Where can people find you? Um, that's the problem right now is there's really no online. He's hidden. Yeah, like to get, if, to get if stunt people work, wanted to find you. Stunt list, I would suppose Instagram would be the best way. Yeah. yeah. At Blinkered Biggie or just Facebook is my name. That's what you find there. Anyway. Sorry, what's your, what's your Blinkered uh, Biggie. Blinkered Biggie. Yeah, I, I thought I heard that right. I was just like, it is. It's like a, it's like a sort of English slang. It means like floating poop. And I'm <laughs> like, ah! I'm like, that'll be my username. And if people get it, awesome. And no one gets it. No one, Except now everybody will. They think I've made blink red big. I'm like, no. I can see why you think that though. But damn. Awesome. Blinkered well, Biggie. Patrick, I, had, I had no idea. If you're, if you like to have those big, like, you got a bar mitzvah or a birthday or uh, something crazy like that. <laughs> Patrick, maybe, no, no maybe. I don't do those shows. Yeah, yeah, sure. You about. wouldn't do that. You wouldn't I go and do know. some flips and no. burn yourself at a bar mitzvah. Come on, bro. <laughs> Trying to get you some work here, brother. <laughs> what did you get out of the episode? Like, what was your experience? Oh, it's always just fun connecting with you guys. And you're great listeners. You listen. It's like you know, you get that feeling. That there's like that connection going flow. on, yeah, an ebb and flow. Like you're listening to what I have to say, you let it finish, and then you have this meaningful comment to add to it, right? There's, I've listened to podcasts now where it's just like people talking over each other. It was, yeah, it, it drives was, me nuts. And they're popular. I'm like, I don't need to know what either of them are saying because there's no respect of like listening and then you know contributing. So every time I do this with you guys, it's great. And we always go off on crazy topics. And you guys like hearing my stories, I assume. So I like that. Too. Yeah, I love hearing your stories. Yeah, your, story your stories are, are amazing. I, that's what I love about being on the mic, right? To have the conversation and, and, mm-hmm. and to dig deep and, and to meet new people. That's why we do this. Thank you. Yeah, so that was episode 77. Enjoy the rest of your day, whatever you're doing, wherever you are. Peace.
Here's a lecture.